Okay, this video is to give you some ideas of sample display boards. Some of these boards very well laid out and have no errors. Others do have some errors. So I'm gonna point those things out along the way to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes and that you can prepare a proper display board. So the first thing that you wanna remember when you're creating your display board is that if you have a traditional science fair project with an experiment portion, then you are going to have one type of display, this guy here, and you do want your display to go in the process of the scientific method, which means that we read this first column top to bottom, and then we go to the second column top to bottom, and then that last column on our display board top to bottom. And therefore, your project should display the method, the scientific method, in its proper order. And you also wanna remember which things are really important are the things that we're gonna place in the middle here. And if you have a science fair, or sorry, an engineering project board, you want to use this layout type of a method. And again, you're still reading your project from top to bottom in each of these three portions of your trifold board. However, there are some differences between science fair and engineering projects. And so you wanna make sure that you follow these particular steps and you give enough information to let the judges know that you have an engineering project. Just don't forget that even though it's engineering, you are still testing something, you are still getting data and graphs off of whatever it is that you built. And when you engineer, it's just not making the same hovercraft that you found online, you would have a new feature or a new component and you're engineering for that reason to better something that already exists. Okay, so once you know what your project display board is gonna look like, the projects that I have are science projects, um, traditional experiments rather than engineering boards, but I will put a video up of engineering boards. So when I look at this video, I can walk myself through the scientific method. I do look at a few things and I think, okay, is it in the proper order? And if I look at these variables down here, I think maybe not. The other thing that I start to think is, oh look, the most important pieces are really kind of tiny. Look how big the procedures are compared to those graphs and this little bitty data table which a judge is gonna struggle to read. So when you're putting your board in order or putting your board together, make sure that those things that are important take up a lot of space. So while these flames and candles are very beautiful and definitely add something to the board, if you take them away, you have all of this space that you can use and your graphs and your data table can be enlarged. Okay, the other big no-no on this board is that we have a name and we need to make sure that there are no names present on your boards. So leave it off. And if you leave it off, then guess what? This becomes a space where you can put one of those lovely graphics. Some other errors that I see I don't see any sort of notation for where these graphics came from. So remember, you should have something down along the bottom of your board, one place or the other that says all graphics or photos taken by student experimenter. These are very clearly graphics. There would need to be a URL underneath or on top of this graphic to label it. I also wanna point out that the conclusion looks to be in a paragraph format, which we really do not want. I also, when I zoom in, I can see the word my, and we should never have first person in our writing. So this really should be some bullet points rather than a paragraph. So I've pointed out quite a few things that were maybe incorrect on this board, but when I look at it, I think, gosh, I really kind of like the color. I like the use of the graphics. I like the blend of coloring to make me feel like there's light and burning and fire. So those things are very positive. Let's take a look at another board. 
this was a bacterial growth project. And so, again, I like the colors. I like the use of the blue board. The bright blue lettering stands out. When I look at whether this is in the scientific order, I do see some things that are wrong. So I would make note that my procedures here probably should go over here. It also seems that we have a, a hypothesis, but we might be missing our question. We do have a materials list. We do have results and conclusions. These conclusions, again, are not in bullet points. And then it seems that this project is really missing variables, and that is a big deal. So we wanna make sure we have variables. The other thing is it has photos on it. So we need something that says all photos taken by student experimenter. So after I look at the order and the format and the layout of this board, I think what could I do that would make it um, better besides getting it in the right order? I would say that the font should really be enlarged. We want our judges to walk up and be able to clearly read this bacterial growth chart and be able to see this graph. And these are just printed on eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. If you take them over to Kinko's, you can blow it up to an 11 by 14. If you ask your teacher, she might be able to do it for you. That would make a big difference to your judges being able to clearly read your graph without squinting. The other thing that you really wanna think about is using your space very wisely. And so if we put in a box for our, our question up here, we could enlarge the font on all of these materials and procedures, and we could take up a little bit more space. Then these even these pictures could be enlarged to a little bit larger size. And so utilize your space. Don't leave a lot of blank space, but most importantly, make sure that these um, charts, the data should be before the, the graph or at least side by side and make them bigger. Use the space on the board a little bit better. This particular board does that spacing very, very well. The font is large enough that as I'm walking to this board, I know what it's about. I can read the purpose in the question. I can see a a data chart, um, I can see my graphs. It has a few issues with being maybe um, out of order, like I would love to see that the variables come into this area or maybe even remove this picture and put it someplace else so that your variables could go next to your procedures or under your procedures or your materials could slide over here to put it in a better order. But it does fit. They do have the, um, the URLs and the photos taken by students, which I like. They have two graphs because they're using inside and outside data, and they're correlating their graphs to that data chart, which I think is great. So there's a lot of positives. Again, the colors stand out. Using that blackboard with bright yellow and bright green really allows it to kind of pop. There's some cement... Um, symmetry. The font is in green and then all of their graphics are outlined in green. Their data and their graphs are in blue. The rest of their language is in yellow. So there's kind of, there was a purpose to the colors that they chose and it blends very well. Mostly they use the board space fairly well. Just needs to be put into the right order. This project used a header. Um, and so that gave them more space on their board. And if we zoom into this picture, you can look at those millions of data points that were provided. It's super tiny. But what they're trying to show is, hey, look how much I did. Look how much testing and data points I have in order to make this really cool graph that I'm putting below you. And so I think it works. They also have a component to this project where they're talking about some extra data. So if we take a look really quickly at their research question, they were comparing different cups. 
And when they were comparing these different cups, often what students want to say is, oh, which cup is the best? And when you ask a question like which cup is the best, you get an answer. Cup A is the best. But that doesn't actually show the trend of what this graph is representing, which was time, um, over time, how did the temperature maintain in those cups? And so if you look at their research question, they ask, how do various cups maintain temperature over time? Does the most expensive cup hold the temperature longer? So by asking the question in a different way, they have not said, they're not gonna have a conclusion that says cup A is the best. They're gonna be looking at best being defined by two components, holding the temperature over time and maybe expensive. What's the cost of that cup? We can see that they covered the brand names of the cups and labeled them with tape. So they added an additional data section. They named their cups rather than having those brand names. And if we look back at the previous picture, and then they, they compared it. They said, what was the price when it was purchased? And I guess maybe some, some went on sale perhaps. So they have this kind of current price and price when, per, when purchased. And so you can see that each cup did have a different cost and a different location to purchase it from. So that additional data, I'm guessing, was used in their conclusions. So this is a great example of those results and conclusion statements. So remember all those data points. We don't want a statement about each in our results, but they did make some average statements about each cup. And then in their conclusion, they talked about what they saw for these various cups when they were comparing them against each other. And then they made this kind of final real world connection to those cups that often we think that things that cost more are going to be better and that would be the best and in reality i think that their results showed something different than the most expensive cup holding the temperature the best so just to recap um, the boards laid out well has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of data points it is missing the hypothesis statement, um, but it does have these other great features where the student remembered the label that they were supposed to put on, the graph was enlarged to a size much bigger than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, the student acknowledged the variables they control and the variables they could not. They had some additional data that they gave us to help acknowledge the results and the conclude or actually the conclusions that they drew and these you know hundreds of data points resulted in no more than four or five bullet points okay let's look at the next project i have so this is a project where they looked at a glow stick and what would happen if you place the glow stick in different um, temperatures of water. So right away, I noticed that they're telling me what's most important to them is this section of their board. And when I look at that, I think, huh, your materials list in your procedure, really not the most important. This stuff that you threw way up here in the corner is the most important and really should be larger and moved. Okay. They do have bullet points. I love the colors. So when I talk to students about color choices and how to make their project board stand up, I almost always say to them, choose one or two colors. Make them a blend somehow. Talk to your art teacher. Make them complimentary. But this board chose every color of the rainbow. And I think that they did it because they were working with glow sticks that came in a variety of colors. And so I actually really enjoy the rainbow color of this project board. So some great things about this board. 
You can read the words. You can read the scientific method. It is in the correct order. They did remember um, at least one label. I, I think that it, it probably needs more. I think it probably still needs the label of all pictures taken by a student experimenter. Um, but it looks like a great board and you can really read it when you're walking up to it. To improve it, put things in the correct order, move your data and your graphs into this major section. If something needs to be shrunk, it's always procedures and materials. If you need to make that font smaller to get it to fit in a tiny little space that you have left, shrink it. Those are the least of your worries. Your data and your graph belongs in a more prominent area. The other thing that you can do is move this title off of the board, and now you have more space as well. This is the last project board I have for you. Um, this is not quite a double board. So there is a line here where two boards were sealed together and on the back they're taped to hold it nice and strong and steady. But this bottom portion is your traditional board size, which is your 36 by 48. And then they decided they needed a little more space. So they cut another board and they attach to the, to the top, which is 100% doable. I always first look to find out if it follows the scientific method. And so I look down and I see question, hypothesis, materials, procedures. I love that they have their variables. They've got some data. They've got picture data, which is interesting and not always something that you can catch. They have number data that they recorded in this chart and they have um, graphs. But when I take a closer look and I look at graphs, we have two graphs down here, and I'm gonna blow them up so that you can see that they were looking, this graph connects to this data chart and this graph connects to this data chart. So they, they, they used magnetic pull and they picked up some washers and they used magnetic pull and they picked up some paper clips the only problem is this graph way up here. One, it's out of the way. It doesn't quite belong up on the right. And what they're trying to tell you is that this graph is related to these pictures and to these numbers. And so it's not quite in the correct location to show that and make the connection super strong. So it is a wonderful project. It follows the scientific method really well. The blue and the red pop. They've used their spacing. They have things large. I love the picture data. We just need to organize it again in just a little bit better way. Okay, I hope that's super helpful. There's another video coming for engineering project display boards, so stay tuned.